Well, hello there, friends. Amazing recipe today. I'm going to show you how to cook the most amazing pork tenderloin. Stay tuned. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell. Stay tuned. I'm going to show you how to make this perfectly cooked, beautiful pork tenderloin. Well, friends, let me show you. It's a must, a must, a must. If you're going to do a pork chop, you're going to do a pork tenderloin, you got to brine it. It's going to be so tender, so moist when you do it. I promise you, you'll never go back. First thing, we're going to clean the pork tenderloin. When you get it, you get that silver skin in it, and you get that membrane in it. See right there, that membrane, friends? Just remove the membrane, otherwise it's going to make it difficult for you to remove the silver skin. See that membrane right there? Just remove it. Just yank on it. Don't worry about it. And then I'm going to show you how to move the silver skin correctly, okay? Let me just... Uh, Clean up right there, that membrane, <laughs> taking longer than I want. Okay, now look, folks, very simple, I promise you. The silver skin, you grab the, the silver skin in the front, and what you do, you take your knife, and you see the way I take my knife and I put it against the silver skin, not against the, 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 the loin, against the silver skin, and all I got to do is scrape, look, you see? Gently scrape, and you see no meat on the other side, friends. That's the secret. You go like this, no meat on the other side. You see, look, very simple. A child could do this, okay? So we're going to clean it up. They got that silver skin, friends. The fat, eh, the fat, I don't really care. It'll melt anyway, and, and, and it tastes good, okay? So we don't care about the fat. It's a silver skin Then you got to remove, friends. You see right there? Look, remember that. You take it, you fold it, and you scrape it. You see? It's pretty simple, isn't it? Everything we do is simple, friends. I'm telling you. There's nothing complicated about this. When I tell you a child can do it, some people don't believe me, but I'm telling you, a child can do it. <laughs> so here we go. Now, right there, there's a little sinew right there. I like to kind of remove it a little bit. You don't have to. You see right there, look, make it flat. Go like this. And this is this one's going to melt, so I'm not going to worry too much about it either, okay? I don't want, now, if you're very, very meticulous, then you want to remove all of it. You see, you want to take your time and remove it all of it, but it's not that important, my friends. I promise you, you'll never know it's in there, right? So here we go. We got a nice clean pork tenderloin. So I got a, a, a liter of water. It's about a, about a little bit more than a quart of water. Cold water. Make it cold water. It goes faster, right? Cold water. Then I got about um, a half a cup of salt and about a, a third of a cup of, of brown sugar. And I got the um, uh, uh, juniper berries, if you got them. If you don't have it, don't go out there looking for juniper berry. And I crack them, uh, and, uh, and I put a, a couple of bay leaves in there. Uh, and, uh, and let me tell you something. This right there, my friends, you'll never again not brine a pork tenderloin. I promise you. After you do it, and all you got to do is just put it in there. Don't worry about a thing. Put it in there about three hours in the fridge. In the fridge. Three hours, in three hours from now, we're going to do it. I promise you, it's so tender, it melts in your mouth. So I'll be back in about three hours, and we're going to cook this, and we're going to make a nice sauce, and we're going to make a nice presentation. So we'll be back in about three, four hours. Okay, friends. Well, the um, uh, pork tenderloin has been in the refrigerator for about four hours, three, four hours. That's all you need to do. Don't leave it in there all night, okay? You don't need to. And uh, some people are wondering, is it going to be too salty? No, it's not. Don't worry. All right, so look, I take it out. When I take it out of the brine, it looks kind of strange, but don't worry. It's okay what it looks like now. It's where if there's some um, 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 juniper berry here, just uh, remove them. We want to dry it really good, my friend, really, really good, okay? Because uh, you don't want to go in the fry pan very wet, so you take pepper towels. Pepper towel, pepper towel, pepper towel. Make sure it's super, super dry, my friends. You can never have it too dry when you go in a fry pan. Otherwise, you imagine, right? Huh. Um, uh, the, the firecrackers, you're going to firecrackers. <laughs> Sometimes I come up with some good one. Eh? So look, friends, uh, we're going to go in the fry pan, try to make sure there's not too much pepper in there. All right, so now, salt and pepper. I think it's dry enough. What do you think? You think so? I think so. I think it's dry enough. All right. No more pieces of juniper berry here. All right. We're going to go in the pan. The pan has got to be 365. That's why I like this thermometer, so I know. 
I'm going to put some uh, uh, coarse uh, cracked black pepper. And uh, I am going to put a, uh, just the salt. We could have used the garlic salt in there. That would have been okay too, but too late now. <laughs> but garlic salt would work in there. All right. So be, don't be afraid to be a little heavy on the salt and pepper. Nice seasoning. Very important, right? We're going to make sure this is hot. We want it to be 365, okay? In the meantime, I'm going to get ready because while this guy is in the oven cooking. Now, remember also, friends, we don't want to overcook it. We don't want to undercook it. We certainly don't want to overcook it either, okay? And what I mean by that, everybody is afraid of trichinosis, 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 trichinosis. We died 138 degrees. Okay, so first of all, we are now the case of trichinosis in like 50 years, my friends. Okay, so don't worry. <laughs> That's been eradicated like 50 years ago. But if we are the case, somewhere out there who figured out a way to get around it, uh, 138 degrees, you're good to go. Well, we're gonna cook this guy at 145 degrees. All right, so we're going to be fine. We're going to put it in the pan, and we're going to create a beautiful Maya reaction. We know, you know, we like this. We like this beautiful caramelization right there. So we're going to put it in, and when we put it in, hey, you, kick, kick, kick. That's what it is. I don't know. Low. Mamma mia, you would think, right? So look, <laughs> we're going to go put it in there. Let me make sure to make sure. I want to, when I put it in, to go ch. You're not going to go cheap because it's, it's 350, 200, and what is it? 330, 333. I thought I had it on high, but no, I didn't have it on high. So then what we're going to do, we're going to make a pen sauce. After this is beautiful golden brown, we're going to make a pen sauce. And then we're going to saute some spinach, and we're going to serve with a beautiful mashed potato. Very simple. Eh? A child could do this, okay? If you don't want to do pork, like a lot of you don't do pork, do exactly the same thing with the chicken breast. Same recipe with the chicken breast, my friend. I promise you it'll be delicious. Do it with a beef tenderloin. Really, I promise you, same, same deal with a beef tenderloin. You gotta watch that video over there to clean the beef tenderloin if you want to. It'll show you how to clean the beef tenderloin. Okay, I can smell it. I know I'm good. Put it in the pan. Boy, that pan is barely long enough. Leave it alone. Okay, let me clean this up here. Let me clean this up, friends. Let me get my sanitized rack. I got my sanitized rack. Remember my water, right? Got on the water with a uh, um, half an ounce of bleach or white vinegar, whatever it is. You got to sanitize, sanitize as you go, my friend. Okay? Sanitize as you go. All right? Clean up as you go. So we got a clean kitchen. And we see I'm not touching it. You notice? I want to create that Maya reaction, that caramelization on the outside, okay? So let me get rid of this out of the way. Hey, what do you do with this? What do you do with this? Nothing, okay? Water, throw it away. Let me check, let me check it. Not yet. Okay, we're going to do some spinach right there, my friends. Oh, what I didn't tell you also is I put clarified butter in the pan, my friends. I put clarified butter so I don't have to worry, but it's not burning, right? If you don't have clarified butter, use a good cooking oil. Whichever one is your favorite cooking oil, okay? That's what you want to use. Because if you use regular butter, it's going to burn, right? So we're going to turn this on. We're going to put spinach and or sun-dried tomatoes. You know, when you get sun-dried tomatoes, friends, you notice, when you got sun-dried tomatoes, you got the, the core sometime of the sun-dried tomatoes. See, look, just remove the core, okay? You don't want the core in there, right? And then what we're going to do, we're going to cut them in very fine julienne. And a fine julienne is very simple, friends. Let's check it out. What do you think? Do you think it's good to turn? Eh, give it another minute. Okay. Don't touch it so much. <laughs> look, you put them on top of each other, friends. You see, look, flat, flat, right? And then you take your knife and you barely, barely move the knife. Barely move the knife, you see? So what you're doing, you're cutting small julienne. Because I like sun-dried tomatoes. 
But I like the very small pieces. I don't like when you go to a restaurant, they give you a piece of sun-dried tomato so big, you chew on it, and they're not chewable. They're almost not chewable. But here, my friend, look at it. You see? All of a sudden, we got a very fine julienne right there. We're going to take that julienne, we're going to put it right here. Oh, don't take the knife to clean. <laughs> Jean-Pierre, do as I say all the time. Be careful. Don't use your knife to scrape the board, okay? We're doing good. We're doing good, friends. We're going to take this guy. Ah, now we're looking good, you see? Now we got some beautiful caramelization here. Now we got some good, beautiful caramelization. That's what I want. I want some nice color. I got some color on here now, boys. And the pan is really getting hot. Thank goodness we're using clarified butter, like I said. Otherwise, it'll be all burned by now. What we're going to do, we're going to take this guy. And we're going to pop it in the oven, friends. I got the oven at 400 degrees. Let's saute a little bit on the side. A little bit on the side, a little bit on the other side. I want to get it all the way around it. We're looking good. Now we're going to pop it in the oven. I'm going to stop the oven, the, um, the heat for a minute. Now I am going to deglaze this pan and make myself a wine reduction. First, I'm going to put a little shallots in the pan. Look at those shallots. <laughs> I show them all the time. They're amazing. They're called banana, banana shallots. Believe it or not, they come from France. I got the one from Canada and a beautiful. And then I got the banana shallots that are from France. Look at this thing. And they're delicious. They're sweet. They're gorgeous. Banana shallots. If you've never had them, I tell you, they're wonderful. They're worth it. Okay, we're caramelizing. We're caramelizing the, um, the shallots. Putting some fresh tarragon. You know, that's my fam uh, famous herb. Famous, my, my favorite. Ay, ay, ay. Herbs. And now we're going to deglaze the pan with the red wine. Okay? A child could do this, right? As long as you measure carefully. We're in good shape. Wine reduction. How do you make a wine reduction? You can do it in a reduction pan. But since I already had this pan dirty and I'm trying to use less pans so you guys don't have to use them, you can do it in a fry pan also. And the reason why I use that fry pan is right there because I got all the, uh, the goodies. Otherwise, you use a reduction pan, you see? And this, my friends, is a reduction pan. This right there, we could do this and finish it up right there. And let's make sure we got all the goodies in there, you see? You see? It smells amazing, friends. It really, really, really smells amazing. All right, so now, it's going to take a minute to get heat. So, reduction saucepan makes it easier to reduce. Now here, we're going to do the spinach. And for the spinach, friends, we're going to use butter. I got black pepper all over the tongue. We're going to put shallot, and we're going to put the sun-dried tomatoes. And at the last minute, we're going to put this right there. We're gonna wait for the wine to reduce, and then we're gonna put a touch, maybe a touch of um, a beef stock. By the way, the beef stock, friends, right over there, you gotta check out that beef stock recipe, folks. You can make the traditional beef stock, or you can make the one, then, then you buy the beef broth already and you, you help it by putting some more vegetables in there. And I think there's a link over there somewhere, all right? So here we go, friends. So it's two different videos, traditional or the one that you buy. And how do you make the one you buy at the store a little richer in flavor? And look how beautiful that is, friends. See how gorgeous that is? Now, remember, the sauce is good, but the sauce is as good as the, uh, the stock you're putting in. You know, you're going to use a crappy stock. A good luck making a good sauce. Put your sun-dried tomato in there. All right. And in a minute, we're going to check the pork tenderloin. Time to clean it a little bit. We'll make that wine reduction so far. It's pretty easy, right? You know this? You know this? A child could do this. <laughs> no, it's not difficult, friends. I promise you. Sometimes we make it more complicated than what it needs to be. All right? I like to clean the kitchen as I go. I think a clean kitchen makes a better food. <laughs> it's state of mind, my friends. All right? State of mind. State of mind. We want to make sure we're in a clean environment. I'll tell you what I could do. I can make sure those strung dried tomatoes 
And at the last minute, you can certainly add some garlic in there if you want to. But the sauce doesn't have any garlic, so I don't want to add garlic in here too. But you certainly could saute a little bit of garlic in here. There'd be nothing wrong with that. Add a little garlic puree in there. It'll be, be just fine, but we don't really need it. We're going to reduce this so it's not too hot. And at the last minute, we'll put some spinach. I like to remove the stem of the spinach. You can leave them in there if you want. Uh, it's up to you. But I think it's more delicate. All right? We're going to wait for this to reduce. And at the last minute, my friend, we're going to take out the pork tenderloin. So we're going to wait a few more minutes for this to reduce. And then we'll check out the pork tenderloin. It's probably going to take another four or five minutes. So we'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, friends. Well, the wine has reduced completely. The pork is not quite ready yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish. I'm going to put a little bit of stock. You see, look, there's almost no wine left. We used about a half of a barrel. There's almost no, no wine left. Maybe I didn't use that much. I used maybe a couple of big glasses. I put a couple of spoons of broth here. That's it. A couple of, couple of spoons of stock, a couple of spoons of broth, right? And, um, and we can let it reduce a little more, or we can put a touch of cornstarch. Let's put a touch of cornstarch, friends. Just a little bit. Cornstarch is, cornstarch is cool. Arrowroot. Tapioca powder, really, really cool. This is a really simple way to thicken your sauce. You can wait and let it reduce, 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 but then you lose, you lose, you lose every time. So you put a touch of cornstarch, look, you see? That was a nothing cornstarch right there. And then we'll finish, we'll finish it up with butter. You see? That's it. That's all I want. I don't need to have it that thick. You see, look. It's thick enough right there because I'm going to finish it up with butter. So turn the heat off. And I'll finish it up with butter later on, okay? I'll show you. Put it on right there. All right. We're going to check on the pork tenderloin, my friends. And don't be afraid to use the thermometer, remember? Everybody like, oh, the thermometers. Oh, I know. The thermometers. It's easy for you. You get one of those good thermometers, put it in here, and check it. You want 145, 150. If you overcook it, don't cook it at 180. Everybody tell you to cook it at 180. 180, guess what you get? You get a dry, overcooked pork tenderloin. We don't want to do that. So we're going to check it. I'm sure it's about 125, 130 by now, but I'm going to check it anyway. I'm going to check it just in case and see what I got. Uh, yes, and I got 126. So the, good guess. So we're going to wait. All right? We're going to wait. We're going to wait another two or three, four minutes. All right? That's all we're going to do. We're going to wait a few more minutes. Okay, friends, we're going to take it out of the oven. We're going to let it rest for a few minutes while we finish everything, okay? Whew! It's hot. Good, it's supposed to be. <laughs> we're going to leave it out. Yeah, we're going to let it rest just a few minutes, and then we're going to cut it. It should be kind of like bouncy, you see? Bouncy. <laughs> bouncy. Okay, they're looking at me like, what? what are you talking about? Bouncy. Here we go, friends. Now, let me get a clean tongue. Let me get a clean tongue. And then I'm going to take a little butter. Eh? little butter, friends. A sauce. The heat is off. Heat is off. Heat is off. I don't need the heat no more, right? Put a little butter in there. Don't be shy now. Your guests love butter. I promise you. What I do is my whisk. The minute you put the butter in, friends... Mix it in, okay? Don't be shy. It's what's gonna make it so special, friends. So now at this point, there's many school of thought. When people think you should um, leave all the shallots in there and uh, uh, all the, uh, the, the um, hey, let's make sure. We got some seasoning in there, friends. I want the, the fine paper, fine paper, fine paper. Uh, people think you should just leave all the, uh, the um, let me test it. Leave the, um, the shallots and all that in the sauce. I find it more delicate if you strain it, but it's really up to you. <laughs> Delicious. So what I like to do, is uh, I like to strain a little bit of it in a strainer, friends. You see, I put it in a strainer like this, and I put it directly in a gooseneck, so that I can serve my guests with it directly, make it simple. Except I needed a spoon at the same time. I was trying to be delicate here. Instead of that, I got a bottle there. I went to a very, very fine mesh strainer, so it got plugged in really quick, you see. 
You see, but look at beautiful the quality down there, my friends. Very simple, huh? You see? Very, very simple, my friends. All right, we're going to get rid of this. Let's finish the spinach. And I told you I got mashed potatoes, right? And the mashed potato link is right there, folks. If you have never seen the mashed potatoes, you got to check it out. It's wonderful. All right? Let's make sure that pan gets hot. I got the mashed potato in the oven. What I do is I keep it and I put a plastic wrap on it, and I keep it in the oven. You see, I got a 200-degree oven. If you, don't have one, if you don't have two oven, a lot of people don't have two oven. You put it in the microwave. I know I hate to tell you that, but whew, you see, it's going to be perfect. So we're going to have a mashed potatoes right there, right? And we're going to make a nice plate, okay, my friends? All right, we got the mashed potatoes. Let's saute the spinach real quick. We're going to saute the spinach leaf real quick, right? By putting um, a little bit of the crushed black pepper, because that was the mood. A little more salt right there. And we're going to saute this. Spinach just in two minutes, and then we're gonna make a nice plate. That's all. Hey, you, what are you doing over there? <laughs> there you go. Really simple, friends. Spinach takes two seconds, eh? You can put garlic in there, like I said. But in this sauce, we didn't put any garlic, so we're gonna we're gonna leave it out, eh? Really, really simple. The spinach doesn't take any time at all. This leaves a little small baby spinach. Baby spinach. Want to let it grow into big leaves. I like it better when they're big, but I couldn't get any big one. All right. Let's see. We're good. Maybe just a touch more. So they cook just a little bit more with a clarified butter. Or you can certainly use some beautiful olive oil in there. I think we're good right here, friends. All right. Now, mashed potatoes. We got a plate. I got one of them... Uh, Cookie cutter there, right? I take my mashed potatoes, put it right in there. Maybe just a touch more. What do you think? Maybe not too much more. And then we're going to put that down. Cookie cutter. It makes it nice, you see? The idea is to try to be a little elegant, if we can be elegant. I'm going to put it right in here, friends. Nice and easy. See? That's our base, right? Let's clean up that plate. That's our base right there, friends. Okay. And then, hey, you, come back over here, you. All right. The spinach are done. They're good. Let's get the pork tender on, who had plenty of time to rest. Now we're going to go back into our plates. Now, at this point, we can take a little bit of the sauce and go around it. Just a little bit of the sauce right there, friends. Nothing fancy. All right, that's a little bit of the sauce. Right there, All right? Then we're gonna take a beautiful slicer. Let me push everything out of here a little bit, friends. So we have a little bit more. It's good to let it rest, okay? Remember that. Huh? So we're gonna let it rest a little bit. And when I cook, it's gorgeous. It's pink, you see, look, look how beautiful it is. You see, friends, this is the way I like it. Now, if you have never tried a pig pork tenderloin, my friends, I insist that you try one time. Okay, this is at a temperature of 145. This is perfect. You, if you have never tried it, try it. If you don't like it that way, I'd be surprised to begin with, especially after you brine it. You know, after you brine it, it's never going to be white anymore after you brine. It's always going to stay that beautiful pink. Look how beautiful that is. Look at this, folks. This is going to melt in your mouth. I promise you. It's going to melt in your mouth. All right, so here's what we do. We take the potato out, right? And then we're going to put them right here, my friends. We're going to put them right here, just like this. We're going to put them right here. Oh, you know what? Hold on one second. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm changing the design. Changing the design, friends. I'm going to put them right here. There you go. We're going to put them right here, friends. Just a little better. Come back over here, you. All right? I'm back over here, you. I'm back over here. Voila. Voila. And voila. And voila. 
Okay, then we'll clean up our plate in a second. We're gonna take, there you go, the spinach, put it right in there in the middle. Right in there in the middle, my friends. All right, just simple. And then we're gonna finish with our sauce right here to cover the bottom of the plate. That's it. And voila, my friends. We got right there a beautiful pork tenderloin masterpiece that all of you guys can do at home. I'm gonna try right now, my friend. Look at this, look at this. This is like, it's gonna melt. Oh, mmm. It's amazing. I love it. I hope you make it. Remember, friends, it's not that difficult to make it look elegant. Bon appetit. I hope you make it. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell. We'll see you in the next couple of days with more fantastic recipes. Thanks for watching.